Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. KC Pet Project received the Community Impact Award at the annual Kansas City Business Journal Capstone Awards last week for its Veterinary Care Center. This new vet care clinic opened in October 2015, allowing KC Pet Project additional space to provide needed medical care for the animals they rescue. This project was made possible with help from the Petco Foundation, Grand Construction, and several companies who contributed to the clinic. Each year, the Capstone Awards honor outstanding real estate projects in the Kansas City metro area. Other city projects winning awards were the Leon M. Jordan Campus for the new East Patrol Police Station and the Regional Crime Lab, as well as the Water Services Department's $40 million Twin Creeks Infrastructure Project in the Northland. Now, speaking of pets, does your pet need to update its shots or get a Casey Mo pet license? For just $30 for altered pets and $40 for unaltered pets, Spay Neuter KC will offer its tag license chip package for KC residence pets on Saturday, March 26, from 9 a.m. to noon at the Hillcrest Community Center. The TLC package includes rabies vaccine, Casey Mo pet license, and a microchip. We continue to see a lot of interest in the city's dollar house sale and land bank programs. The land bank held two information sessions this week to help people apply for and buy those homes. And that's where we're going to start as we check in with some of our city's departments. I had seen online the program and uh, I came out today mostly just to learn more information about the program. I thought this would be a great opportunity to see what all was out there and what direction I needed to go for. If people are interested in the Dollar House program, we encourage them to go to our website at kcmolandbank.org. There's an FAQ on there, frequently asked questions with responses. They can learn a little bit about the program. It's $26, $25 for the background check, a dollar for the house. And then when the deeds are recorded, uh, you'd also need to pay to record the deed, which is approximately $65. Anybody that buys one of these houses should expect to do uh, electrical work, uh, plumbing work, uh, they probably need a new roof, probably HVAC system, a kitchen and bathroom for sure, and, and maybe some foundation work. I'm just young and ambitious and I want to uh be able to invest in something that lasts and something that matters and so uh, I thought if you could get a good deal on a house and put some time and money into that, uh, that would be a good investment. Uh, this entire community and all of its baseball loving fans are fired up and ready to get all the action started down at Sprint Center. This is the 15th year that Kansas City has hosted the Big 12 Men's Basketball Championship. 15 years. That's more than any other city, and it's certainly something we love bragging about, because with the people of this city work extremely hard to keep this tournament here where it belongs in Kansas City. I couldn't be more grateful for their work and their efforts. And I'm sure many of you are wondering what the heck are we doing at Parade Park for a tournament that's going to be at Sprint Center uh, later, as kicks off later today. Well, we're standing now as the site of the seventh Major League Baseball Youth, Urban Youth Baseball Academy in the country. It's a $14.5 million project that includes construction of two baseball fields that are Major League size, a youth field and a softball field, plus an indoor facility. Uh, the academy will focus on using the games of baseball and softball as vehicles to help develop the core of the youth of this city. The Phillips 66 Big 12 Men's Basketball Championship has been called a bucket list championship for college basketball fans and the hardest ticket to get for any college basketball event. We could not be prouder of these national comments and the fact that the Big 12 Men's Basketball Championship is going to stay right here in Kansas City through the year 2020. Um, it's going to be the, the best contested tournament in the country. Uh, we're going to draw very large television audiences. Uh, we're going to have sold out stands. And uh, the reason we are is because there's great competition in the league. 
and Kansas City is a great host for the uh, for the tournament. So we we appreciate that very much. At this time, I'd like to present the mayor with a uh, a Wilson autographed basketball. Uh, this basketball is signed by all ten head coaches, uh, six of whom have taken teams to the Final Four, and uh, probably half of whom will eventually be in the Basketball Hall of Fame. So, Mr. Mayor, on behalf of the Big 12, it's my honor to present this to you. Thank you. This is probably the closest I'll ever get to making a real team. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out. It's going to be great to be with you over the coming days. As we build out the Urban Youth Baseball Academy on this park, the, the basketball courts there are going to have to be relocated and rebuilt. And the Big 12 is helping with that effort. And I think that we ought to find a way to honor them when we put those courts in and move them in some way to make sure that everybody who plays on that court, those courts, know that the Big 12 was a part of that move. Because when they're moved, they're going to be rebuilt, they're going to be brand new courts, and it's going to be a wonderful thing. I couldn't be more excited about the Big 12 being here again 15 years in a row, here until 2020. That says a lot about Kansas City, but it also says a lot about Commissioner Bowlesby and the Big 12. The fact that they continue to come here when I know that there are others who would love to snatch it away, but they recognize the value that we bring to the table, and the way that we bring that to the table is for everybody in this city to remember that the best Kansas City asset are Kansas City people. And Kansas City people are friendly, they're welcoming, they're always going to reach out and try to be of service. And that's why we like having you here, because we consider you family, and that means that you get to do the dishes after dinner. <laughs> Thank you all for being here this morning. This is a baseball town, and it's time to unite for its future and help build the KC MLB Urban Youth Academy at 18th and Vine, a place for kids to grow with coaches and mentors from the field to the front office. On opening day, thousands of fans will take to the streets and relay the opening pitch from Union Station all the way to Kauffman Stadium. Grab your glove and join Relay the Way to make history for the future of Kansas City. Hi, I'm Consuelo Cruz with Culture and Creative Services and I'm at the Belger Arts Center at 2100 Walnut in the Crossroads Arts District to tell you about another arts and cultural event that is coming to Kansas City from March 16th through the 19th that is supported by the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund and to tell us about this conference which is the National Council on Education for the Ceramics Arts is Paul Donnelly who is the on-site liaison for the conference and Mo Dickens who is the gallery assistant for Belger Arts Center. Thank you for having us at the Belger Arts Center. Now, Paul, in addition to you being the on-site liaison, you are a ceramic artist mm -hmm. and you are also on the faculty of the Kansas City Art Institute. Yep. So what better person to tell us about the conference, the NSICA conference, and to tell us why this is an especially important year? Um, well, it's uh, come to Kansas City to celebrate its 50th anniversary. And, um, you know, it's probably going to be one of the larger uh, NSICA conferences uh, coming, you know, that they're, they're going to have. And uh, there's probably almost 5,000 people already registered mm -hmm. for the event. Um, INSICA is a national conference that rotates around the country from year to year. And it supports a variety of different programming from lectures to panel discussions to demonstrating artists to uh, gallery exhibits. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a huge event that takes about three or four days. And there's pre-conference events and post-conference events. So it's, a, it's just a, a really fantastic opportunity for people to engage with the ceramic arts. And it's not just for conference attendees. Kansas right. Cityans can come to public programs. And um, there is also, and to learn about the long history that Kansas City has had with the ceramic arts and with the clay medium, can you give us a little background on, on that history, Mo? This is the 50th year of NSICA. And back in 1969, which was the third, it was actually held here in Kansas City. And it's been here two other times in the 80s and again in 2002. And in 2002, we got such great feedback, and people said it was the best ever. And NSICA moves around. It's been to Houston and Milwaukee and Seattle. But everybody's been looking forward to coming back to Kansas City. And one thing I find exciting is since it was here in 02, we've got the Kaufman Performing mm -hmm. Arts Center. We've got the Mayor's Office of Cultural Affairs. We've got the Belger Crane Yard Studios, which is an entirely new complex that's blown up since 02. So Kansas City 
was already well steeped in the history of the, the clay movement, contemporary clay in America, and it's just gotten bigger and better since then. Can you tell us about the exhibits that you have currently up at Belger Art Center and why you decided to get a little bit of a jump start? The show we're standing in represents 14 collectors who loaned us all this work that were purchased out of in the semester sales. So we have local, you know, collected work. And then right across the hall, we have the Desire Show, which features 37 artists from 22 countries. And they all responded to one word, desire. And I got to admit, when I, when I heard we were doing a show called Desire, I was kind of thinking it might end up being a, a sexy show. And mm. some of the first work that arrived was from a Turkish artist, and it was porcelain shoes representing um, Syrian refugees who had drowned trying to flee the war. And what she desired was to live in a war-free Middle East. And I realized very early on that we weren't getting the show I thought we were getting, but when you deal with artists, you never do know what you're going to get. And it turned out to be an incredibly thought-provoking show. And I hope everybody will come down and see all these wonderful exhibits we have here at the Belger Art Center. And there are a number of exhibits throughout the city. Uh, as I mentioned, it was 100, over 100. Regional. And there, And it's also, so from the northeast part of town, we have the Kansas City Museum, who's participating with an exhibit on the American Jazz Museum, is also participating on the east side. We have uh, exhibitions as far south in the city as uh, Brookside and UMKC. And then we have the West Bottoms, who has a great representation of also another, another set of venues. But we also have Johnson County. You mentioned Lawrence. Lawrence, Topeka, Warrensburg, Sedalia, Missouri. So this isn't just about the city. This is a Midwest regional um, showing of what, it, what is the ceramic art form. And, and so I mentioned all of these different places for people to see, and these are the, all of the exhibitions are open to the public. So how can um, conference goers and Kansas Cityans attend and get to all of these places? There's a hundred exhibitions between Sedalia and Lawrence, so we're not gonna be able to touch them all, but Inseca.net has a great uh, listings and uh, information on the bus routes and everything else you need to know about the conference. Mm -hmm. So again, nceca.net, nceca.net is your source. Thank you so much for Consuelo, having me here. Consuelo, I like to say clay people's good people. <laughs> and I hope the Kansas Cityans will, will turn out and meet all these good people, these 5,000 good artists. That are coming that are from all over the world. And are coming to Kansas City and mm -hmm. they're going to be blown away with what they find here. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supports local nonprofits that bring cultural, social, educational, and recreational activities to our area. To learn about additional upcoming events, visit kcmo.gov slash ntdf. Hey folks, Kansas City is about to throw the biggest street party ever. On May 6th and 7th, we're going to open up our streetcar route downtown and we're going to have a party at every stop. Come on downtown and join us. Stop in every business, 
eat at every restaurant, have a great time, but be here on May 6th and 7th, put it on your calendars and wait for further details. We're gonna see you there and have a blast. Kansas City is on the move. Unprecedented growth and development, world-class innovation, vibrancy, energy, excitement for our future. And now there's a new way to experience it, the KC Streetcar. Connecting workers, residents, and visitors to work, home, entertainment, and the arts. From early weekday mornings to late weekend nights. From the River Market to Union Station and all the stops along the way. Thriving with new opportunities, new jobs, new residents, more fun, more life. All right here in Kansas City, together. Learn more at kcstreetcar.org. Development projects continue throughout the city, including the newest project in the Northland, a much-anticipated Costco store planned for the intersection of 152 Highway and North Platte Purchase Road. For years, many of us have been saying, when are we going to get a Costco in the Northland? Well, that day has come. By this time next year, Costco is going to be right over there. I have something more to talk about. Not only do we get a, a, a beautiful new store, uh, MD Management is uh, providing land right across the street, 80 acres in fact, to the park, uh, to the uh, Platte County R3 School District, where, we're, where they're 80 acres. So they're going to be able to build two schools, including a new high school. Basketball tournaments, parades, and First Fridays are just some of the many springtime activities that bring residents and visitors downtown. Fortunately, there are plenty of parking spaces. During the Big 12 tournament, we will be tweeting parking information. You can even pre-order a space at many city-owned garages by using our Click and Park reservation system. Just visit kcmo.clickandpark.com to reserve a space. You can also find out more about parking on our website at kcmo.gov and search parking. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, just go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and all of our great programs for viewing on demand. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.